I am very impressed with Umar Nurmagomedov for a number of reasons after watching him beat Corey Sanhagen at UFC Abu Dhabi. And in this video, I'm going to be telling you why. What is up, guys? And welcome back to the channel. You're watching the daily series of Why the MMA, where I give you my thoughts. But more importantly, ask for you guys' thoughts because you guys are the MMA community. And I always love to interact with you guys. Today, we're going to be recapping UFC Abu Dhabi. I'm going to be breaking the card down, reacting to the fights that I watched and how everything played out. But mainly, I'm going to be talking about the main event in Umar Nurmagomedov versus Corey Sanhagen. So guys, thank you for tuning into the video. If you want to support the content, you're more than welcome to like this video, comment your thoughts down below as you watch along this video, and to join the Wide MMA family by subscribing to the channel. Now, without further ado, let's go ahead and get right into the UFC Abu Dhabi recap. Now guys, I gotta say, out of all the fights I predicted, let me give myself a, a pat on the back. I only got two of them wrong. Like I said, 100% on breakdowns, 70% on predictions. But starting off with the first fight, or well, the last fight on the prelims, Azamat Mirzakhanov knocks out Alonzo Menafield in a barn burner of a fight, man. Azamat is just, he's just so clean, man. Out of every light heavyweight that I've seen, he's one of the cleanest at not only kickboxing, but also knowing when to clinch, when to initiate the grappling exchanges and mix it up in the sport of mixed martial arts. So I'm very excited for his future. And for all of you Azamat fans, I'm sure y'all were happy with his performance against a very tough Alonzo Menafield who could knock you out at any point in time. Next, we had Joel Alvarez, TKO Elvis Brenner, landed nearly double the strikes and just kind of picked Elvis Brenner apart. Then we came to Mackenzie Dunn versus Lupi Godinez and this was one step in the development of Mackenzie Dern becoming world championship level. Now, she has the grappler. We all know that. She is developing the wrestling. That's a big part. But what one thing I said is that I wanted her to slow the fight down. One, obviously not get as emotional as she has in the past. And then I also wanted to see her slip strikes into takedowns. Now, we did see her slip a few strikes and get into some takedowns. And however, what she really did was whenever she was able to take her down, she was able to press her to the cage, take her down. She took her down in open space. I mean, her takedowns looked a lot better than they have in the past. And even though she didn't take her down as much as she wanted to, she still did a lot of boxing. And to be honest, her entries for boxing looked good but her exits were where the problem was. Even given the fact that Lupi Godinez is a good block boxer herself, there is work that still needs to be done, but I'm glad that she took this step in the right direction. It's not an easy thing to come from one sport, especially jujitsu, which is a non-contact sport. Fall in love with the contact of MMA. By contact, I'm meaning strikes, obviously. And then learn to actually blend the two together at the highest of level on the job, considering you're not gonna get many amateur fights or local pro fights for that matter so i'm actually very impressed with mackenzie dern's win and we picked that one right moving on to tony ferguson versus michael chiesa now chiesa you know that was a good performance i didn't expect that out of him you know to be honest i i know he shies away from the striking a little bit but i thought he would engage just a little bit more that tony would be able to cut him off a little bit more but he did a good job of staying on the outside not taking any damage not engaging in any of the striking really he kind of negated everything and made the first couple of minutes quite boring not in a bad way boring but a good way boring staying safe using good footwork not ever getting caught up in a corner and being forced into engagement he did like and then he was able to just take tony down and choke him out and he, the back take that he had was very slick I'm not gonna lie i slipped on michael chiesa a little bit going into this and as far as tony retiring or halfway retiring i want to say that you always want to see a legend like that go out on top however seven in a row seven or eight fights in a row that he's lost and a lot of them have been in brutal fashion you just don't know if he's ever going to get that win again you don't know is he ever going to have that robbie lawler moment i don't know robbie lawler is one of the few guys who did do it and retire off of a win people were saying going into this it might be his last people have been saying this going back for his like last three that it might be his last he said it was gonna be his last and then in the post five press conference he said not my last he has more work to do whether that's in coaching or whatnot which i don't think he should he would become a very good coach just my honest opinion just because of the technical deficiencies that he had over his career i mean don't get me wrong he'll probably be a good coach in some areas but i feel like he was just better being in the driver's seat of his fighting career rather than 
the more technical approach that it takes to be a coach. I mean, I'm always going to watch a Tony Ferguson fight, even if he does fight again. But I'd be happy to see him hang up the gloves. I think whatever comes next for him, we'll all be excited to see what happens. However, moving on to maybe the fight of the night in Davidson Figueredo versus Marlon Vera. Marlon, he tried to come out hotter. He tried to come out hotter. Davidson negated it very quick. He was able to win the first round pretty handedly, mixing in his grappling and out striking Marlon Vera. And then the second round came along and it seemed like Davidson almost took an off round a little bit while Marlon Vera was doing a good job ripping the body. Marlon Vera's boxing actually looked a lot better in this fight than it has in the past. He's usually more of a kicker, but in this one, he was looking pretty sharp with his hands. And to be honest, I think he uh, he woke up in that second round. The third round came along and Davidson Figueredo, it's not just the fact that he could take you down. It's the fact of what he does on the ground. His jiu-jitsu is very slick. The way he takes backs, the way he is able to move with your weight when you're trying to get up, that's the grappling you would like to see in the Bantamweight division. Now, I keep saying this whole theory and I'm being proven right every single time. It's harder to hold these smaller guys down. That whole Dagestani style doesn't work as well in this lighter weight classes just because you had to be more technically proficient as a smaller guy, especially in the grappling aspect. But I think Davidson did a very good job of negating all of Marlavera's offense in that last round and in the first round. And Davidson Figueredo, he's, is he not a championship quality contender yet? To be honest, I don't know who should get the title shot, him or Umar Magomedov. Now, Umar did have a win and we're about to get, talk about that fight, but he did have a win over Corey Sang, which is a giant deal. But I still don't know who deserves it more because that's 3-0, 3-0 for the former flyweight champion in Davidson Figueredo. And he's 36 years old. Umar's young. He still has time, right? Who really has the merit in this case scenario? Now, moving on, Sharputin Magomedov got the win, a uh, very dominant win over Mihail Olesheshek. You know, actually, the first round, the first round was quite difficult for him. He thought he was going to be able to use more kicks, but Mihail Olesheshek kind of shut that down for the most part, pressuring him very well. And it looked like maybe Mihail, I don't know if he used too much in the first round, but it started getting a little lackluster in the second and third rounds. It seemed like he didn't have the kind of spark that he had coming out in that first round. And Sharpoon just very calmly, very technically was using great footwork on the outside, staying right outside, not over committing on any footwork patterns not trying to rush out of the way or run away from the cage or anything like that it was very calm kickboxing approach and that was very good to see from Sharpoon Magomedov because if you are using outside footwork kind of like Justin Gaethje did against Habib you will fatigue you will get very tired the only one I've seen been able to do it and do it constantly for five rounds is maybe even Israel Adesanya but even he's still very calm and technical with his footwork he's never really running away from anybody and that's what we saw out of Sharpoon Magomedov so I'm glad we got to see that out of him I kind of want to see him against a, a straight up wrestler now I want to see if he could dissolve that style because it's going to be hard for him with all the kicking background that he has and all the kicks he likes to throw trying not to get those caught maybe being forced to use his hands a little bit more it'll be interesting to see that but i'd also like to see and if you are trying to you know kind of start building up these younger guys and making them fight each other what about a bo nickel bo nickels you know he could use some more experience and going against a striker who actually has the real ability to hurt him like a sharp Putin Magomedov I'm excited for it but moving on to the main event Corey Sanhagen versus Umar Magomedov now I'm gonna go come right out and say that Corey Sanhagen he looked good he did not look bad at all so all of my guys saying that he looked defeated he looked this he looked that bro Corey Sanhagen looked good he looked technical he looked like everything we thought he would but they both learned something in that fight they both did. Umar Namagomedov looked fantastic as well. But the momentum of the fight is is something that's very important that we need to talk about in this one. Because starting off the very first round, Corey Sahanka won that. He denied all the wrestling attempts. He was able to land solid shots on Umar. Umar was kind of fumbling over his feet a little bit. He was attacking the legs very good against Umar. Even the second round, he was doing very well to attack the legs and all of that. Corey Sanga looked sharp. Nobody thought he was going to be able to grapple with Umar in the Dagestani style and Khabib's cousin and whatnot. Not here on this channel. We knew the dangers that Umar presented, but we also knew how good Corey was. Now, one thing I will say is the grappling exchanges didn't go exactly how I thought. I thought that 
Corey wouldn't give his backup as much. Instead, he was able to give his backup and still not let Umar completely take his back, which was good on him. I feel like he could have attacked a little bit more in the grappling scenarios, but he was kind of content on just not being got if you know what I mean by that. I actually thought that Umar would be able to get him on his back a little bit more, but because Corey's wrestling was so good, he gave up his back a little bit more often. And I thought that if the grappling exchanges played out with Corey in his guard and Umar trying to pass, that it would be more dangerous for Umar. But that's not how it went. Matter of fact, it went Umar shooting right off the bat, getting stuffed, Corey having a lot of success on the feet, and then Khabib said something in his corner to where he said, you gotta believe in your striking. Because Umar, he came out there and it seemed like he thought Corey Sanhagen was just gonna outclass him on the feet, but that he would have the advantages in the wrestling and in the grappling. But it was kind of the opposite. If you think about it, it almost is reminiscent of Islam versus Alexander Volkanovsky 1, right? to where even Volk said I he his wrestling or his grappling wasn't as good as I expected and Islam on the flip side said his striking wasn't as good as he expected and his wrestling was better than expected it's the same scenario here and you could see that as the fight went on Omar got more confident while Corey got a little less confident and it's because of the fact that he thought it was once I deny the takedowns if I can deny the takedowns which he learned that he could in that fight, that, okay, it might be a little bit better on the feet. It might be a little easier on the feet. But Umar's a tough problem to solve because Umar didn't shy away from the boxing exchanges how I thought he would or how Koi probably thought he would. Instead, Umar, every single time, if you're wondering why Koi wasn't committing, going in, getting on the inside and making it a dog fight in those last three rounds is because Umar was hitting him with a jab or a cross every single time he tried to enter. I mean, it's not like he was entering for free. Every time he tried to enter, he was eating a punch. Every time he was, and anytime he was trying to set up a combination, he was having to defend a takedown. I mean, that not only is exhausting, but it's also very discouraging. And even if you're defending everything, the one who's attacking is the one who's actually getting rewarded for the points, if that makes any sense. And so Umar's ability to learn on the job was extremely impressive for me because he hadn't had any top 10 fights up until that point and he fought the number two guy that's crazy to me now we knew he had mma experience because of his combat sambo background and Corey had a lot of fights as well so the experiences were there but against top flight talent on the day to be able to go from being ill confident fumbling over your own feet to ultimate confidence and being able to dominate Corey saying hagen for five rounds that shit was very impressive now for however impressive it was i still think that i would give a guy like Sean O'Malley the advantage purely again because of not only range control but comfortability with the hands as well his ability to get up his ability to tack off his best almost the same things I gave Corey Sanhagen the advantage for but if they do give Umar that fight which I think they just might do it might my thoughts might change the closer the fight gets and given the fact that Sean still has to get the Umar up. however as far as who deserves it more out of Umar and out of Davidson Figueredo I already told you, Davidson's 36 years old. That's old for a little guy. I mean, they age quicker because they have to rely on speed and, and they have to rely on all their physical attributes that are going out of the window once you hit your 30s. And so I'm afraid that if they don't give Davidson this title shot, if he has to win four in a row in this division after being a champion and moving up, that they might be wasting his time. And Umar, it's not like he fights extremely often. He could wait and get the title shot or he could have another high level opponent fight him get that experience under his belt and really be situated for not only a title fight but probably a favorite going into the title fight as well what are your thoughts on that who do y'all think deserves the next title shot at the winner of marab and sean o'malley were y'all impressed with Umar Namagamedov, did y'all also witness how he was learning on the job in that Corey Sanhagen fight? And also, what were your thoughts about Corey Sanhagen's approach? I'm interested to hear you guys' thoughts about this because personally, I think he did very well. I think that the wrestling kind of negated a lot of his offense striking wise because of the early fatigue, not only physically, but mentally of going up, down, up, down. And the fact that Umar was just a better striker than he thought. I think Corey does get back up to the top, but again this is a very tough division i think with one or two high profile wins he's right there in that title picture again given all of his track record but what are your guys opinions on the fight let me know in the comments down below thank you guys for watching this video 
don't forget to give it a like and subscribe to join the wider MMA family. And with that being said, I'll see you guys in the next one. Peace.